All right, so this year's trip to the mountains I'm gonna do a lot differently than I've done before. I'm gonna hold the camera in front of my face. I'm gonna vlog this thing. And so step one for every trip is prep. And I really haven't prepped as well as I should have. You know, today is, uh, what is today? Today's Wednesday, I'm about to get up at probably 5 a.m. tomorrow and get ready for, uh, or hit, hit up the, uh, the mountains. And so I'm gonna take you through this whole step-by-step -step process of the entire trip from start to finish in a vlog format. And so as you can see behind me, the GT3 uh, is getting washed. And the first step in any of my prep for the mountains is to get the cars clean. I washed the truck this weekend, and so I have to wash the, uh, the GT3. Step one, rinse. So if there was any doubt of the superiority of this Mosmatic gun, I just my dad just sent me one today. Um, I got another shipment in, and I decided I was going to steal somebody else's gun because I can't live without it any longer. It's freaking amazing. Adam's wheel cleaner. Spray in the barrels. I usually don't let it sit. I just go right to it. My new favorite piece of equipment, Microfiber Madness and Credit Brush. And this is the flat version, which is super slick because it fits without getting hung up on the dust boot. Easily gets in to the cracks of the wheels. Wheels and wheel wells are clean. So I have some, actually Shine Supply, Shine Supply Wise Guy in my Adams uh, tire and rubber cleaner container because I ran out and I don't have another gallon of it for some reason. Uh, and so I'm using the Shine Supply Wise Guy mixed some up for the tires. Tough Shine Tire Brush, it's awesome. So now because it's been a while, I'm gonna reapply some Hydro 2 Light. You just spray it on and try to not hit the, cali the uh, rotors if I can help it, but it doesn't really matter. Also get up in the wheel wells. And then immediately spray it off. Hey Kate, you want to go to the mountains with me tomorrow? I want to see so cute. What's all over your face? In case you're wondering what's in my bucket. Credit brush, flat. Old Griot's lambskin mitt that they don't make anymore. This brush, large brush from CarPro. Sky's the limit car care. Oh, cool. Horse hair. Lug nut brush. Easy detail brushes, both sizes, large and small. And then the Tough Shine brush. And I just keep a grit guard in there. And just leave it out of the way. Let's work on washing. I don't know if you guys can see this, but notice, yeah, you definitely can. So notice the colonite sweating out. So now when I wash it, it'll go away and it, and it won't come back. 
So again, if you ever find yourself using colonite and you park the car out in the sun, the next day you, you'll see the oils come to the surface and they come right off when you wash it. But don't, uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't fall into the temptation of messing with it unless you were washing the car. You don't want to scratch the paint you just dialed in. Put some Adam shampoo in the PF22 foam cannon. There was a little bit of water in there. Notice I switched the wash and rinse colors. I agreed with everyone. I just needed to get it done. This is my 24 inch bucket filler. I've learned to quit filling this all the way up on the small car like the GT3. Fill it up three quarters. This Prie hose bib is so awesome. Like if you could feel it, you'd understand. Quarter turn, it's amazing. At the 40 degree nozzle on the end of the Mosmatic wand and the Mosmatic gun with the built-in swivel. Special delivery of microfiber, clean oh, from my Shelly. What am I, your pirate help? What happened? You saw a snake? Yeah. What? What did he look like? He looked like a what? lizard. A lizard? But what did the snake look like? It looked like black and white. Black and white? Black and white. And a Daddy's being grouchy. He needs his camera back. I'm coming. He needs to show his car bathed in foam for the bazillionth time as if everyone hasn't seen it already. I'm giving you this camera. I just take the extra, just dump it in the bucket. So I've been testing out these new, or these new to me anyway, Carbon Collective, Merino Wool, Creta Pad, and Creta Mitt. I think the Creta Mitt is the way to go. It has more, it's more pliable. I think what I don't like about the Creta Pad is how it's too thick. And so using the folded inside out mitt seems to work the best. This thing I don't like at all. As soon as you put it in water, it turns into like a flat, pile of water with no soap on it so I don't I don't like that thing very much throw some soap on here let's just grab both of them testing them out see when I put this thing in water after a minute or two it loses its shape serious soap Switch to deionized, close, open, open. See, I think there's a big difference between beading and then protection, so on. Throw the paint down. I notice how the water sheets off the car and then leaves a few beads left over. That to me is true protection. 
rather than just water beads. So the water beads are the byproduct of the sheet, if that makes sense. Again, so we're getting you know, plenty of beading, but then the water sheets off the paint. Like so. And of course, I could use the sheeting method with the hose, but that's what I have the leaf blower for. You still have, um, even after the wash, you still end up with some residue, some oil left over, especially since I'm not like buffing out the paint. So I'm gonna use, this is a Griot's bottle, but this is Meguiar's D156 spray wax. I always like to put this on periodically and then use the hydrate as my normal drying aid. So I'll just spray this all over the front clip. The more you put on, the more you gotta wipe off. See how it wipes completely clean. So the little bit of oil, a little bit of residue or sweating that came to the surface is now wiped clean. Car's clean, windows are clean. I even cleaned the plastics. I have to dress the tires. Just finishing up the interior, just vacuumed it all out. The more time I spend with this vacuum, the more I like it. Really does well. Easy to put away. So I'm just gonna wipe down the interior with some 1Z. I already did the interior window, cleaned the, the fingerprints off the display from our installation. And I also cleaned the plastics for the gauges. So now all I'm gonna do is take and I'll spray some cockpit on my green interior towel and the car will be ready to go. So my interior secret weapon. So I'm gonna dress the tires with some carpo pearl and an Adam's foam block. Got my pluffles, ammo, emergency spit, spit emergency shine, back there just in case I need it. All right, so I always bring a bunch of glass towels to clean the windshield. I bring some big uh, 26 by 59s as my drying towel. I've got some Creature Edgeless and some minks, you know, some of the door jam, and then the drying towel. I'll use these if I decide to do a waterless wash. So I'll bring my Optimum No Rinse, Grio's window cleaner, and then again I have ammo spit, and that's all I'll really need for the trip. Uh, I doubt I'll wash the car, but I might. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how ambitious I get. Uh, it's a pretty tiring trip, and a lot of times you're better off just leaving the car dirty and driving it, but we're ready to go, and I'm gonna start packing the truck. This is why I keep my lids, so when I do travel, I can just throw them on the bucket. Screw it in place. And I've got myself a nice little travel kit. And I won't, I won't bring the dolly, I'll just bring the, the bucket with me. All right, trailer's out. Gosh, I got a mess. Look at all the, all the rodent devices. Didn't catch any rodents. All right, so I, you know, push the trailer out. I got it all figured out to where it just swings out there nice and easily. And then I throw it on the truck. So I'm gonna load it on there real quick. I just move the basketball hoop out of the way. And I'll um, pull the thing out straight so I can load the car. Put the lock in place. All right, trailer's connected. Also got my breaker bar and sockets just in case. I can tuck these under the seat. Got some extra oil for the truck just in case. And we're ready. All right, so it's time to get three sets of tire pressures dialed in with my crappy crappy little compressor. So check the truck, 
We'll check the trailer. We'll check the spare. We'll check the GT3. And then we'll be good to load up. Loading it up. My winch battery isn't dead. I ordered a new winch rope, but it didn't, I figures it didn't come in in time. So now I'm stuck doing this with the cable. Yeah, I could always just drive the car up in, but I bought the winch for a reason. So I'm gonna pull out these, get them set up so we can put the car in. Broke. All right, so the winch just broke. So Michelle and I had to guide the car up in, not too bad. I was just in kind of a weird incline here, so. The car's in. I'm going to work on strapping it down. I don't like to crisscross it. Um, this is the way I've done it thus far. It's worked fine. So, but I mean, I guess I could go left to right. And then the fronts. The fronts would be too short to crisscross anyway. The straps would be. And so here are the fronts. So we are good to go. Close the window. Close it up. So the car is... Loaded and ready. Such a sweet setup. Too bad my winch. I didn't get my winch cable in time, and the battery's bad in here. I need to get a new battery. So I guess I better check with the truck and make sure that. All right, I'm good. Tail lights, turn signals. So what happens when the when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The floor. The floor.